Hello and welcome to another day of the 12 Days of Christmas Crafting, where you're going to learn how to create these fun money holders. Today we're using the Brother Scan and Cut for these projects. And on many of the other days, except for the Tic Tac Snowman, we used just our tools, we used our trimmer, we used our scoreboard. So you could follow along with the 12 Days of Christmas Crafts. There are so many and I'll show you some of them at the end of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do right now is show you what machine I'm using and I'm going to go ahead and put this candy cane paper from Shiny Brightly onto the mat. Now you can use any 12 by 12 paper that you have in your stash. My name is Kimberly Smith and I'm the paper chef. So please, if it's your first time here and you like to craft with the Scan and Cut or with just any kind of Stampin' Up! products or any kind of paper crafts or do-it-yourself things you get at the Dollar Tree and the... And the Dollar twenty-five tree and the Dollar General and all that stuff. Paper pumpkin kits. Smash that like button and subscribe, please. It helps support my channel. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you the screen, and we're going to start at the beginning. And some of you may have done this with me last year. So this is the concept. And let me look for the stylus, and it is raining, so you're going to hear the pitter-patter on there. Now, the concept is this, and I'm already saved this template. You're going to create several tags on the screen so that you can create on one piece of 12 by 12 paper four tags that are blank like so and then four tags that are that have a hole in the middle like so now you're going to be doing everything on the machine yes you could do this with canvas workspace but i like to do my tutorials sometimes standalone especially when i'm live streaming if you want to get these little guys maybe you have some left over from last year and you can pull them out these money holders then please use the link on my on the description of this video for these money holders. Now these can be used for money or lip balm. And so I will raid the little paper purses that I have, right, after this, and we'll take out the lip balm out of my paper purses if I have any lip balm left, because I've been selling like more crafts actually since my craft fair than I have at the actual craft fair, I think, because people actually come over and and I bring crafts with me when I go places, and I've been selling a lot of crafts. So I don't even know if I have any lip balm left. But we're going to put lip balm in here, too, just to show you if we have one. So let's start from the very beginning. But I just want to explain that you can make four of the fronts and four of the backs. And you need the front and the back for each project. So one of these is going to have a hole in the middle, and one of them is not. So let me go ahead and don't worry that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and save this to my machine. And I, it should already be saved on my machine. So just making sure that I don't lose that. Yeah, let's overwrite the one that's already on my machine. So anyway, let's, we're gonna start at the very beginning so you don't have to worry about anything. I teach you all the steps of, steps of the way. If you wanna know more about Canvas Workspace and how to use that software, I have an entire course on that which is over seven hours long and you can find that at thepaperchef.com. All right, I'm turning off my light. So we are starting at the very beginning. When you turn on your scan and cut, I'm using the SDX 125, you see pattern and scan. We're gonna go for pattern. The pattern that we want to pick out are the shapes. So we're going to build this with shapes that are built into the machine. So we're going to use the first one that's shapes. And now we're going to pick out a shape for a tag. Now you might be saying, but aren't there some tags that are in here? I'm just going to scroll down as I'm talking. Aren't there some tags in the icon section? Yes, but I don't really like the tags that come with this machine. I don't like them that much and they have a big hole and then we have to like do stuff to get rid of the big hole. And so I just like using, I just like making my own tag sometimes, especially when I'm kind of doing it, doing it yourself girl right here. So we're going to use this shape here. You're going to scroll down and they're in order. You can see the BA-A114. So you can see that the numbers at the top are, the lower numbers start with a zero or something, see? And it goes down and it says BA-0114. So that's what we want. We want that tag shape. And you can see it up here in the corner if you didn't get a chance to write that down. And this will be in the description of the video later. We're going to go for the height of two and a half inches. And you're thinking, well, that's more than two and a half inches. Yes, but this is by its side. So the shape I'm working with right now is on its side. So when I say height, I'm talking about in relation to this, the side of this, it is only two and a half high. Now you're seeing that the width is changing in proportion. So the height and the width is changing in proportion to each other. We don't want that. We want to change. We want to take this button we want to turn off this button so that when we change the height, the width does not change. So the height is two and a half and the width is five 
and a half. And again, this is all because it's on its side, but obviously the, when, you, when you're going to cut it out, this is obviously five and a half high and two and a half wide, you know, when, when you look at it this way in the shape. But we're going to go for it. Five and a half. Keep, and I like the audible sounds. I know you might get annoyed by them, but actually I like knowing that I'm actually working on something. So it's like, I like the audible sounds. You could turn those off on your machine. So that's what we have so far. Two and a half by five and a half. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to put, now let's move this over here so you can see it. See, that's the tag. Yay, we have a tag. So you can use the tag. So say you're just watching this and you're like, well, I don't want to make money holders. I just want to make some cute tags. Look, make a cute tag. Here you go. It's, the paper's called Shining Brightly. You can't get this paper anymore. Sorry I'm using a lot of papers you can't get anymore. This is actually a current paper, but we ran out of it already. It's just one of the only things I had that was 12 by 12 that was still left in my stash. I really need to restock some of my Christmas stash papers, Christmas papers. Anywho, well, we could use a build-in tag, but we're going to make our own little hole. So we're going to so we're going to click on add and we want to make a hole with a circle. Now normally I make a hole that's really tiny for the twine, but this time I'm using ribbon. So we'll make it a little bigger than we did last year. Every time I do tutorials, they're a little bit different. We're going to scroll down to the circle, which is BA-A045. And we're going to click that. And now we're going to still make a pretty small hole. We're going to make it 0.2, like which is one fifth of an inch, right? 20, it's only like 0.2, meaning 20% of an inch. So that's okay for ribbon. And you can see how so you can see that hole. See, there's the size of the hole. It's pretty good size, but it's not too big where the ribbon falls out. Now, if you wanted to use twine instead of ribbon, you, you could go down to 1.15. And then you could tie your twine, like your linen thread in there. But I'm going to go up to 0.2. All right, so that's good. We want one hole, so we're going to put that there. Now, the hole, you're like, where is it? It's all the way up there. And then our tag's all the way down here, and our hole's all the way up there. So that's not going to work. We need our hole to be on the tag. So we have to go get it and drag it down to where we want to put it on the tag. So you might be saying, but Paper Chef, how do we know if it's centered? Well, we don't really know if it's centered unless we use the alignment tools. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's go to Edit. And this is the Selection button. And we're just going to select this button here, which means select everything on the screen. There's only two things on the screen. So we're going to select those two things. And we're going to click OK. So now we want to align this hole in, in relation to the tag. So in other words, we want the hole to be in the center of the tag. Okay? So not in the center like here, here. We don't want it both horizontally and vertically aligned. We just want it, we just want it horizontally aligned. So we go to Object Edit, and we click on the Alignment tool, and we want this button here, which is going to... You see the line going across? So that's we want this hole. See that? It just moved to be in line horizontally. Now, if we were to hit this one too, it would go, the hole would go popping over there and that wouldn't be good because we'd have a hole in the middle of our tag. We don't want a hole in the middle of our tag. We want the hole to be right there. So horizontal align, click OK. I do repeat myself a lot and that is on purpose. Okay, so that is part of my teaching method. So we're going to click this button here, which is grouping them together. Now, if we don't click this button here, this one that has the circle and the triangle in it, then what would happen is I'd move the tag and then the, the hole would be stuck down there, and then all the alignment we did would just be undone. So we need to like group them together so that they stay together. At this point, now that we have a tag with a hole in it, we can duplicate the tag. So go up here to duplicate. That's the plus one, right? We're gonna hit, we're gonna make two tags instead of one tag, and we're gonna take one tag and put it way off to the side. So we're gonna put it way down there, get it out of the way. The one we're gonna work with is up there. Why do we need two? Again, we need two because one is solid, for the back of here, and one has the hole in the front. So the next step, you guessed it, we're making the hole in the front. Why did we need to wait to duplicate? We needed to wait to duplicate so that we could have two holes so that when the holes go through each other, the front and the back tag have to have the holes in the same spot. That's why we needed to wait until we had the hole to duplicate the tags. So rookie mistake, if you accidentally duplicated before you made the hole, then go back and do it again. Now go and we're going to click OK, and we need to go and add, you know, just click OK till you get to the point where you see the add, and we're going to add another shape, and this shape's up near the top again. So we're, it's, gonna, it's up here, we're in the shapes one, 
And we are going to get the shape right here, right? It's the third one over. B A dash A zero zero three. It looks like a rounded, a rounded square, but we're going to turn it into a rectangle. So if you might be saying to yourself, boy, I don't have a scan and cut. Well, first of all, if you want to get one, use the link in the description of this video and get yourself a scan and cut like from Santa, right? But if you don't have one, maybe you can use a die. So like think of, th be creative. Think of a die, follow along with me and maybe make some tags and make them a different way. You can make lip balm and money holders using maybe one of your rec stitch rectangle dies and you can cut tags using a different tool that you have. So you can still make this project with other tools. Just get creative with your stash. Anywho, we're now going to make this really small and we're going to again, again, turn this, make sure this button is selected so that you can change the height and the width independently of each other. And this one's going to be short. It's going to be 0.9. That's nine tenths of an inch. 0.9 for the height. And then we want it to be as long as we can fit this in there without this falling out. Right, so we're going to put this 2.95. And this was after much experimentation and tweaking. So I have all the measurements done for you. You don't need to, you don't need to go experiment. It's already done. It works. You get four to a page. That's why I tweaked it the way I did to make this tag fit so you could get four sets back and front, four to a page. There you are, 0 0.9 by 2.95. This one's definitely worth writing down. So now we're going to click set. And now we're going to click, we're going to take this and we're going to put it right there. Now, if we don't group them, what will happen? See, oops, there it goes, right? There it goes that, and this goes moved independently. So you need to put them together, put them together like so, and kind of eyeball it, first eyeball it like so. And then you know what to do. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to selection tool. This time, instead of selecting everything on the screen, we want to use this selection tool to the left, which means make a selection on a certain area. And the area we're selecting is up here and over here. And that's why I told you to move that other tag out of the way so it doesn't get into our selection. And we're going to click OK. And you see now that the red is selected. Just It has selected just our tag and our rounded rectangle shape. Click OK. Click Object Edit. Click Align. And now we're going to do that same thing we did before, horizontal align. It didn't look like much, but it did move up a couple pixels. And now, if we don't group them together, they're not going to stay together. So we need to click that same group button that has the circle and the triangle. And now you are happy you have a set of tags. So let's go ahead and make eight of them because I don't want to waste paper. So, and then I could show you what something, this is really cool. I'm going to show you, we're going to duplicate this. And instead of us trying to go like this and put them all over the mat and et cetera, et cetera, we're going to let the machine. So let's just kind of put them on top of each other, right? Just to show you how cool this is like that, like on top kind of watch this. So we're going to click plus and we want four of those. Okay. Now we're going to click on this one and the one in the back and click plus and we want four of those. Okay. It's a hot mess. But watch how this hot mess can be straightened out very easily by the machine without us having to drag them all over the place. Click OK. Click OK. And we're going to use what's called the auto layout. This is the auto layout. So it's under, you have add, edit, and then auto layout is the first little button with the shapes. It has a pentagon. Looks like a five-sided and a little tri couple little triangles, a couple little pentagons in there. This is the auto layout feature. We want to select the first option, which is go ahead, scan and cut. You decide where you want these shapes to be. So let's, you can turn them either direction as long as you fit them in on the mat and look how nice that is for us. It straightened them all out for us and we click OK. The only thing I would do differently here is, and this is only because of my machine always seems to get caught. The paper always gets caught like near the top of the mat. And sometimes I end up having to tape it down and stuff. The only thing I would do differently is I may go in here and select. I might go up here to select everything. And I would click OK and I would take this arrow and I would just move them away from the top. Even though there's, they're all fitting on the mat, I like to kind of move them kind of away from the top, away from the side. That's my personal preference. I don't care how close they are together. 
I just don't want them to get caught on the top of my machine. And we're going to say, okay, now at this point we can save, but let's save after we cut because we're going to go ahead and start cutting so I can say hi to you guys. So if you haven't checked in yet to say hello, please do so. I'm going to go ahead and click start. You saw me click okay a couple times before it got to the point where saying start. And now what it's doing is it's going to test how deep does it need to, how deep does the blade need to go? Well, it's determining how deep based on the auto blade technology. So if you have a CM model and not an SDX model, then you can go ahead and, this is designer series paper, pretty much standard designer series paper. You would have to set your blade depth to four, but I don't have to set the blade depth because the auto blade is determining the blade depth it needs automatically by determining the depth of the paper in relation to the depth of the mat. So that's pretty cool. I really like how it does that. And I'm just gonna give it a rub because I don't like when things slip out of the way. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Phil. Happy Sunday. And we have Candy. Nice to see you. Again, long time no see. Hello, Melody and Candy. Hey, and Debbie is one of our channel members. Shout out to Debbie Salinas, our channel member. You can see that she has a special icon next to her name because she supports this channel each month. Awesome. I appreciate that. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Kathy from Backyard Stamper. Melissa's watching from Texas. B. Pri is watching from Warner Robins, Georgia. Yay, another Georgia in the house. Okay, Pat Williams is here from Oklahoma. Okay, nested Lynn is saying, try your nested essential dies. Yes, you could probably make a giant tag out of that. And then the little nested essential in the middle I don't know if we know hold this particular plastic, but it will hold, it would definitely hold like a smaller lip balm. Okay, I'll keep saying hi in a little bit, but let me show you a couple more things like taking this off the mat. So you're gonna take this off the, first you're gonna remove the paper, right? This is the paper and I have a little bit of extra, you know, at the bottom that I can use for other things. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do first. Next, you're gonna take your spatula and get under there and lift these up, okay? And that is beautiful. And then you're going to pop out the hole. And if you want to save these little pieces for shaker cards, I don't know where it went, but you know what I mean? You could save those little pieces for shaker cards if you want. And then you're going to do this several times with your whole pack of paper, depending on how many you need. And then you're going to, be able to mix and match. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you what I mean by that. I've already done a few of these. So this one can go, that could be the front and this could be the back. See, because you're using a coordinated pack of paper. Oops, no, you can't because that one was from a different, wait, you would have to do it, do it again and again with the, the reason those, now look, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Now this is an important thing in case you do a lot of these. This is why you wanna save it to your machine. This can be the front and the back. Now watch, this is the front and the back and you've also have this side to mix and match. So that would make it cute backwards. All right, look, see this? See how that matches up perfectly? Look at that, the holes, okay? Very important to understand because I started the project over for this tutorial, and these match perfectly, this is only this one kind of paper. Okay, these match perfectly to each other. These match perfectly to each other, watch. Because we did them all in the same tutorial. You see, the holes match perfectly. But this hole is not gonna match the ones I made earlier because I didn't pull it up from saving it to my machine. But anyway, let me, let me show you how to assemble and then I'll show you how to save it to the machine. And that's very important to save it to the machine so that when you make another batch of these with the same piece of paper later, maybe another day, then your holes will all match up because they're from the same batch. So I hope that makes sense. And I, you can definitely hear the rain at my house. It's raining, but my hearts and prayers go out to those in Tennessee who have really, really bad weather and tornadoes. And I'm so sad about that, about what happened to them. So let's lift them up in prayer. So sad. So I shouldn't complain about a little bit of rain at my house, but I'm just saying because of the noise, if you hear it. So what you see what I'm doing, I'm putting, right, let's put something down so it doesn't stick. So I'm putting a bunch of rolling adhesive on there because I'm going to stick the tag together. Now, if you don't want it to stick together, like I'm stuck on you. If you don't want it to stick together real well, and you might want it to be like open up so you can get the stuff out of it. In that case, you could use like Velcro or something and not seal it all the way with, with glue, but I like sealing it because I'm actually going to go ahead and make it 
Oops, I got to put that. Let's put this in there. So now I'm going to put the plastic in there. And see, you want to put some, you want to push that in. And see how that's already staying there? Oh, yes. How cool is that, right? And we're going to get some money and roll up the money. And this was such a hit. And I'm, I'm having Christmas this year with one, two, three nephews. Well, two nephews and a great nephew and a niece and a great niece. Well, actually, two niece, two great nieces. Oh, anyway, lots of nieces and nephews. S sister, I mean, people who love money. Well, who, I mean, everyone who doesn't say they, they, everyone who pretends they don't love money. Bullshit. Anyway, so who wouldn't love this gift, in other words? No matter how humble you're going to try to be, everyone would love this gift. Right, now let's go like this and put this right like that. And you see how I'm doing it so that the thing doesn't fall out? Oh my goodness, how awesome. And then I've already done this part because since it's a scan and cut tutorial, I didn't want you to have to like wait for me to do my stamping. But I always talk about color coordination. Very important, right? When you color, when you coordinate your colors, things just look better. So let's grab some dimensionals. So I used the ink that I used because of this color was I used, let's use this one, Cherry Cobbler Ink. So this is Cherry Cobbler Ink, and I used a really cool stamp set that I don't know if that's available either. This was on our online exclusive, but I think it's still around. So very merry. Tis the season to be jolly because we have money holders and we are jolly. And I just thought this was perfect because it fit right there and it doesn't, it doesn't block the hole and it fits right across like perfect width. So when I, I looked in my bucket of crafty goodness and I was like, which, which one should I use? Like which type of sentiment should I use? And I just grabbed that one and it fit perfectly. And I'm like, yes, I like that one. So I have some gold ribbon and I have some of this little fun iridescent twine. So I was just doing this little guy, just doing this. Chop some of this off. All right, I, what I did is I put a piece of twine in here and I sort of just let that dangle down, I think. Let's see what I did. Um, I just, you can just kind of let it, let it all hang out. Wait, I, I think I did, let me see. Hold on, I did this first. I went like this. I tried it both ways. I tried to tie a the bow afterwards, but I think it worked better when I, I looped it in there. See how that's snug in there? Snug as a bug in a rug. Okay, there we go. All right, now what I did is I went like that a little bit, and then I just took, put my twine in there, my iridescent trim. This stuff was on clearance before, so I, I like snagged it up. It's not available anymore, but I just love it because it makes the season sparkle and it just hangs down. And then what I did is, I just went like, you can go like that. And then I'm just, you know, you can, you can turn it upside down. And if you want, you could tie a little bow or just let it hang. But I think I just let it hang. Sometimes I tied a bow. I'll show you just different variations of it. So there you got that. And this one, I tied a bow on it and let some hang down. And this one, I let, I put the iridescent trim up this way. Because what if they want to hang it on the tree, right? And then I just put a bow on it. And this one doesn't have a sentiment on it. If I am going to tie a bow, I usually tie it upside down. So here's what they look like. All right, let's see if we can snag one for some lip balm. Let's see if I can go in here and see what I have in my stash. Like I said, I don't really have much, much left here for my... From my craft fair, I have the last few things left. Here we go. Here's some lip balm. Found some lip balm. All right, it says mango. We're going to take take one of these, and we shall use this one because I haven't used it in a little while. We'll put that like that, and put some adhesive on there. So my neighbor came over last year. And she made these, she was going away on a trip to see her relatives. And she went and made a bunch of these. Like she picked out all her own paper 
I'm going to use this one with the combination of one of these. Yeah, that'll be cute. So she, she made a bunch for her relatives. They, they loved them. She said they loved them. All right, we're going to roll up. Let's see what we have here. I rolled up my 10s. I'm about to roll up my 20. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no, I don't need to roll up the 20. We, have, we just said we had mango lip balm. Okay. All right. I was just showing you how that fits in there. Isn't that cool? So we want to turn it. That's important to turn it. This one was made in Guam. How cool is that? I think my sister will like that one or my niece. So I just wanted to show you that the we're just doing it for proof of concept. Showing you that the lip balm fits in there and how cute that looks. And then, of course, we can just do the little ribbon thing. Do the ribbon thing. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to fold this over. And I'm going to loop the ribbon around and then I think I after I did that I just tied I went like that first and you could hang it as an ornament but I just went like I just went like this and tied it upside down and then my bows go right side up for some reason I don't know a mystery of bow tying and this this ribbon it's gold ribbon and it's it's sort of like paper so it's not something like my mom would use for sewing or something like that but it's, it's really good for crafting because it's you can bend it like paper. <laughs> but it doesn't have elastic in it like the iridescent stuff. Just trim in one side smaller. Tis the season to be jolly. Put a couple dimensionals on there. Pop these little dots off there. And put that one right under there, just to season to be jolly. And it needs to be shorter. Because it matches. All right, so that. And I think it needs, I think they all need some sparkly iridescent trim in there. So I'm just going to shove some trim just right under there. Because the paper sparkles. So I just want, I want the bottom to, I want the whole thing to sparkle. And you can tie a knot and just sort of let that hang. Voila. Now you it looks like you've done a lot more work on it and it's just more fun. So I'm going to be bringing lots and lots of these with me and giving these out as presents. And another thing you could do is, is like if you had, did you, ever, did you ever see those games? And they're, they're kind of real popular on social media right now, like, you have to roll the ball and it lands into like a cup or it lands on a certain dot and everyone gets like a prize, right? Well, these could be the prizes for a game. So like if they land on a certain color, you're going to give them a $5 one. And if they land on a different color, they get a $10 one. And then maybe the person who wins gets the 50 or $20 one. So, right? So like this is just an idea of what you could do. Like besides a gift, you can give it as a prize. And of course, a stocking stuffer with the lip balm. So let me see who else is here that I missed. All right, so we do we say Luis? We didn't say hi to Luis, hello. And Karen from Florida, Karen R. And Craft with Love from Virginia. And Jean T is here. I know you'll make these, Jean. You always like making these projects each year. <laughs> hello, Linda. Okay, so yeah, I'm glad you make I'm glad I made it easy for you, Linda. That was cool. The saran wrap game, thank you. That's another one, Karen. The saran wrap game is so fun. So you just keep, you just keep like putting stuff in the saran wrap. And then as, as they unwrap the saran wrap, you have to wear mittens, right? You gotta wear like the gloves, like the ki kitchen mittens. And then as they unwrap the saran wrap, I am showing you how to save this, by the way. I, I'm, I didn't forget. I know sometimes I'm the absent-minded professor, but I did not forget. So you, you have the saran wrap, everything's wrapped in it. And then, like, you have to get, you have to, like, get something out with mittens and something falls out and you have to pass it to the next person. And then, you like, all kinds of things fall out. Like, it could be a bass sponge or it could be money. It could be, like, all kinds of things fall out. Like, that's what's really cool. So, yeah, that would be a good prize for that. All right, so now we're back to here. So, 
let's let's see. We I was clicked OK and we're back to this point. So you don't want to do all this work again. And especially because what I was just showing you is very important that if you go and do this again later, then your holes won't match up unless it's from the same batch. Now, these are from the same batch. So my holes match up. But then the ones I made today. OK, let me show you again. These are not from the same batch because I just made them with you from this tutorial. So the holes match up on this batch because I made them today for the tutorial, but the holes don't match up from one batch to another. And so, so see, now it's not a big problem. You got, the, at least you got the height and the width correct. That part's cool, but you'd have to punch a new hole and all this stuff. So you want to save your template. That's the reason is just to save yourself time, right? To, from year to year. So go back to this part right here where it says save. And it's asking you want to save to your machine, to Canvas Workspace. This is if you've registered your machine, right? Or do you want to save to the USB stick? So you want to save to the machine. And it's asking, OK, this includes a group pattern. You can't ungroup the pattern once you save it. Of course, you don't want to ungroup it once you save it. So of course, you're going to say OK. Always say OK. If you don't say OK, you can't move on to saving it. And I'm going to show you how to find it again. And I want to also finish talking about the blade and then show you what we made in the other, all the other days of you know, Christmas crafting and some other crafts I have. All right, so we're going to say OK. Now, let's say. Let's just click home and you're like, oh my gosh, she's deleting all the patterns. Oh no. All right. Don't worry that you deleted all the patterns. I just showed you that. You are going to come up to the machine the next day. Your machine is off. You turn it on. You're like, hey, I want to I want to make some more tags because, boy, I brought these to work and they were super popular and loved the little lip balms. And I started getting orders for these. Okay. Whatever the case may be. So you, you want to retrieve your data. So go to retrieve. And you want to get the pattern back, and you're going to retrieve it from the machine because that's where you saved it to. And you're going to scroll down, and the things you have stored on your machine are right there. So there's the pattern. It's the last thing. Just go to the last page, and there it is, and you can restore it. OK, at this point, if you don't want to make so many of them, you can delete some of them. Don't trash it here. That's trashing the whole pattern. If you want to delete some of them, you click OK. And you can go into the edit mode, and you can delete some of those right now. And it's not going to hurt anything because it's still saved with all eight of them. But just this time you run it through, maybe just this time you want to print four of them, or like, which is two tags, right? So that's OK. You print two, and then you know you, you don't save it the next time. Like, say you don't save it. You, print, you go and cut two, and then you say OK, and you cut them, blah, blah, blah. And then when you retrieve it again, watch. Watch what happens. I delete all patterns. Watch. When I retrieve it again, it's all still there. It's just that that time I didn't cut them all. So I hope that was valuable to you, like saving them and retrieving them and using your pattern again. All right, last thing I mentioned about, so some of you might be new to the scan and cut and you're like, I need one of these machines. Like this is so freaking awesome, and we, which it really is for any paper crafter. So what you want to do though is use one that has a, you want to get one that has an auto blade technology. That's the ones I'm recommending now. And there's no numbers on this. You don't have to set the blade depth. So like very rarely do I cut through my mat with this kind of blade. Not that I haven't done it, but very rarely. Now, if you do have a CM model, that's fine. You can do exactly what I'm showing you today, but you're going to use a blade depth of four for cutting this designer series paper. But this one is auto blade, so you don't have to set the blade depth. So if you're going to get this machine, please use the link in the description of this video where it says link to the Paper Chef's Amazon store. And then you're going to see all kinds of links, including the money holders, these, Lip balms from Lip Smackers that I recommend, the lip balms, and maybe some other fun stuff like label makers I recommend and uh, candy I recommend, and including my favorite caramels that I really need to review because my husband ate the last one. I saved it, and then he ate my last caramel. Ha! Huh, the horror. Hello, Ar Aretha from Oklahoma. Nice to see you. And hello, Karen Fentress, a new Karen. There's already Karen R. Now we have Karen F. And thank you, Melody, for reminding people to like this video. I'm going to undo this so you can see, so I can make some room. Now, I've been doing this 12 days of Christmas for the last, I've done maybe, whatever, out of 10 days, I, I did go to a Christmas party, so I did miss one day. But out of 10 days, we did, we did nine days of Christmas crafting and more than one craft on some of the days. So I'm just going to go through and show you that what we've been making in this series. I'll start with what we made in the scan and cut. So these... I did sell one of these, but these are the other two I have left. She liked the one that had the big eyes. 
the big legal eyes. And just so you know, because you're probably wondering, what did you sell it for? $5 is what I'd sell these for. Because, you know, it is your time and your expertise and your embellishments and stuff like that. So this was the Tic Tac Snowman. We did this all in the machine. No, no canvas workspace needed. I showed you how to weld the circles together, how to cut a hole out to where the Tic Tacs show through, and then how to make the little hat using a cup and saucer and using, and just while we're here, because I didn't have the machine out all the time. We used, let me just go to here, just real quick. We used some shapes, pattern, right in here, right in here. Okay, so if you missed it, it's pretty cool, right? This cup and saucer and this flower pot. We used the cup and saucer and the flower pot to make Mr. Snowman's hat. So if you missed that, we did it all from the machine. Pretty cool. And earlier I was telling you about the tags you can get from here. And they'd be in here, down here with the tags. But if you want to use these kinds of tags to make your projects, that's fine. But the holes are huge. And I've done tutorials on how to make the holes smaller. Okay, so that was one of our projects. Another one of our projects, not in any particular order, is I taught you how to make this diaper fold treat pouch. And it holds tea and biscuits. Or, you know, chocolate and a Ghirardelli chocolate. So they hold lots of fun stuff. It's similar project to that one. There we go. I'm not going to have all these the next time I see you because I have, I'm sharing these with some people. Okay, so this is a, I'll have some of them though by the end. This is a stand-up double fold treat pouch. And what's nice about this, and believe it or not, this is made from a six by six paper, the diaper fold. But so is the stand-up double fold treat pouch. These are both made from six by six papers, but completely different design and very similar folds but very, you know, very easy to make. All, all things are easy in this 12 Days of Christmas series. Hello, Jennifer from Oklahoma. Oh, and she's making them. Kathy's making these for coworkers. I don't know, this just randomly came out of one of these. So this is, this is a cute little Ghirardelli snowman. Now, I, we also made bags in this series. And here's, here's a bag. Here's a bag. Here's a bag, here's a bag everywhere, bag, bag. Oh, McDonald's had a fun. All right. I'm just trying to show you, I had to go run and get some other kinds of bags. They, these are some other kinds of styles of bags. Okay. And here's another one. I didn't make it in this series because I made this with an actual die and it was from the Tricks or Treats bundle. So this is cool too. I'm not going to have all of these things I'm showing you by tomorrow. I'm going to have, I'm going to try to save one of each. So when I finish this series, I can show you one of each of what we made. Okay. We didn't make this one in the series, but this is just a cute little paper purse. All right. In this series, we made something called a, a, I think I just called it a hanging ornament box. Okay. So this is a hanging ornament box. And some of them hang, and I'm not sure where. I know I used a couple. I'm looking for some. Here we go. This is good. This is good. Here you go. This one hangs. So this is a six by six paper, but you need three pieces of six by six paper to make this project work. And it's just really an elegant ornament, like paper ornament. So that, you know, hope you like that one too. And then we also did in the series these what I call sour cream containers. There's another name for these. These are, they, they make them in Germany and there's another name for the box, but I forgot what I, someone called it. And one time I got one as a swap and they actually had a Velcro on here. I just put a little piece of paper on there as a trim, but you could put Velcro on there. There's some M&Ms inside of these. So that's what's really fun, you know, makes, they shake. Okay, we also did box in a bag. And this was what, part of one of my courses online as well the box in a bag. I think it might have even learned it in one of the scan and cut courses, but we did these manually and there's a little charm on that one. There's a box in a bag. This one's my hubbies because I put the heart on it. Put the heart in the front. It has milk duds inside the box in the bag. Okay, there's a couple other sizes like this one. This is a bigger size of the box in the bag. Okay. Another one of the 
I think they might be called humbug boxes. Oh, no. Could they be called humbug? No, that doesn't make sense. This is just something I made with some, some washi tape. Okay, here's another box in a bag. And that one, the ribbon came off of that one. But you see how the bottom is? Really cool when they're really big. All right, now, what else do I have here? I have some other stuff. Okay, I have some more of the bags. <laughs> Boy, I really made a lot in this series. Some more of these. Okay, here's one of them. One of the boxes in the bag has the little truck on it. Okay, and then another one of the double fold treat pouches. Another one of those hanging ornaments. Okay, and then recently I had a course and I still have the course. It's on Udemy if you're interested in this course, very affordable course. And I taught you how to make, make and sell crafts. And these are my last two note, sticky note holders. So I taught how to make those in that course, along with how to make paper purses, how to make nuggets. And I've also shown it on my channel, but I showed it in depth in that course. And how to make, what was the other thing we made? I must not have any because I don't see them. Oh, nail file, nail file boxes. I think this might be my last one of those. So that was fun in that course. And these are all just like some things I have left over. So those, I hope you're inspired. Here's just a random bookmark. Oh, here's one more nugget treat. So these are my last two. These are my last two of those. So anyway, I hope you're inspired by all that you've seen and that you will give some of these a try. I did have snow globes, guys. And I don't have those anymore because I've already given those away. But we made, in this series, we've also made a snow globe. And I think I might have some doggy treats. Let me grab the doggy treats and that's the last thing we made. Hold one moment. All right. I have, this is, I gave one away, but this is the one I still have. And that we, so I showed you how to decorate this little jar for your doggy treat. And then we made these little Hersh or cocoa, cocoa jars. So I hope all of these have inspired you, all these projects. That is all for now. This is the Paper Chef and keep on watching this series because we have more crafts to make including these fun bags created with double-sided designer series paper. And we are gonna be making these bags soon on this series. All right, have a great evening, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer.